The Leica SL's design is not only unique, but it's quite a far departure from what a lot of professionals would be used to with professional SLR cameras. Its buttons are unlabeled, except for the one switch, which is your on and off right here. Once you turn that on, you'll see that there are four navigational buttons surrounding the LCD. Now the LCD top left button is the one you press twice to get into your menu. And it brings, goes into favorites from the very beginning. Then you'll see that you have the top left, which will go into camera settings. Bottom left is image settings. Bottom right is setup settings. And then of course you can go back to favorites in the top right. To navigate through the menu, you actually scroll using the rear navigational uh, wheel, which can also be clicked in as well. Okay, so there's no OK button that you need to press, which is really good. The top right becomes your back button, like so. You can also use the thumb navigational uh, button at the top, and that will allow you to go forwards, backwards, to select different options, as well as just clicking in once as well. Um, but I find sort of moving it forward and backwards is really, really simple and seamless as well. So while you go forward, going backwards in the situation can actually do what the same thing that the back button does by just pressing the back, okay? Now, the great thing about this camera is that these buttons can all be customized. So if we go into setup and we go down to customize controls, we can actually look at not only editing our favorites, like that, but we can also adjust our thumb wheel, okay, front, uh, which is the top, which is the shutter, right here, or the rear, and we can adjust the direction for, for up or down in terms of shutter or aperture. We can also have the display options for shortcut icons available to you as well. So here you'll see that basically when I'm clicking here, I have eye for information, this is letting me know that, you'll see there, playback. So if I press this back twice, I'm in playback mode, right there. And press this twice, and I'm in menu mode, okay? So we can actually assign four shortcuts to each of these for a long press as well. So if I press this one, I've actually assigned ISO. So I can actually select my ISO just by using either of the navigational buttons like that. The bottom left, I've actually selected white balance, so I can actually select the white balance nice and easily. This one here I've assigned for drive mode. And then the top right, I've actually assigned for my focusing mode. So here we have autofocus single, which is for static subjects. We have continuous, and then we have manual. Now in manual mode, one really good feature that we can actually use is the fact that if we want to focus with the rear button, we can actually focus with this button here, and then the shutter button no longer focuses. The shutter button is now for shutter release only. So for a lot of sports photographers, or action photographers, or photographers that, I guess you could say, just love to focus with the back button to separate the focusing and shutter release actions, those can be separated in that way. Now I'd just like to go through the different focusing modes now. So going into camera settings, we actually have focus mode, which we just went through, which is your single for static, continuous for moving subjects, and manual focus. For static mode, sorry, for auto focus mode, we have static options, we have dynamic, and auto. So we'll start off with static. Now under static, we have different focusing field options. So we can actually select the size of the focusing field itself. I actually like one point for about 80% of what I do with this camera. By having one point, we can actually move the focusing point anywhere in the frame, and you can see it sort of moving around. You can also touch focus and place that focusing point exactly where you like, right out to the corners. Now, unlike digital SLRs, which have what we call crosshair type focusing sensors that can be really, really good, where the other sensors cannot be as quite as accurate, Basically, they usually only go out to the center portion of the actual frame. And then you've got to hope that you've chosen the right sensor to focus with that amount of accuracy, especially in low light. The great thing about this camera is no matter where the focusing point is, it will focus with the exact same degree of focusing accuracy every single time, no matter where you put that focusing point. 
going back into the menu again, and we're gonna increase our focusing field size now to field mode. Now in field mode, we have an option here to actually move the focusing point, which is now larger, around the central focusing point area, which is very similar to what we're used to with digital SLR cameras. So we can't go right out to the extreme corners, but the focusing size is actually a little bit larger now. Now I found this actually to be quite good for focusing on sports or action. Um, and I found that the continuous focusing mode while using this focus field size uh, tended to be really, really accurate. Going back now, and we're gonna increase it to zone. So in zone mode now, we have the option to move nine focusing points around to increase our chances of focusing on a larger area. So for example, if we're focusing on a model running down a catwalk or walking down a catwalk, let alone tripping down a catwalk, I'd probably be using the focusing zone area because it's say a full length picture and focusing area doesn't need to be pinpoint accurate, okay? So this is where this option will come in handy. Now, once we get into away from static and we go into dynamic, we have an option now where we can actually move and focus on, on a certain area and it will keep track of that area. So if we place this over a person's face, now it will automatically move around the screen and stay focused on that person's face. It's a really, really good uh, option and when we're in zone mode, we can go back to field and now that is smaller again. And this works really, really well for focusing on people's, uh, as I said, a person walking towards camera or maybe a kid running towards a camera. But if it's for high speed objects, I'd probably get out of dynamic mode and I'll go back to static and I would make sure that you're in continuous focusing mode and I would probably use something like dynamic, right that. And so this combined with continuous focus seems to work the best for sports and action. Now the next thing I want to show you is the option to change the display. By pressing the bottom left you have eye for information and we can actually switch between different options for what we're viewing on the screen or inside the viewfinder. Okay. Another button that's very, very handy is the, auto, is the electronic viewfinder switch. By pressing that, now we're only looking through the viewfinder itself. By pressing it again, we're only looking at the screen. And by pressing it again, we're now going into auto mode. So the minute that the camera realizes that you've got the camera to your face, it will actually allow you to use the viewfinder and you take it away and you're going back to LCD again. It's a really good option because it makes um, working with this camera very, very easy and quick. The only thing about doing this mode is that it's probably gonna chew up your battery power because it's constantly using one or the other. But if you are constantly going from electronic viewfinder to LCD, it's a really, really good option. Otherwise, I would just use the viewfinder mode most of the time. And then if you wanna playback, you just press the playback button and go straight into playback. So to go into playback, you actually press the rear button twice and that will go into playback. From there, you can actually scroll through the different pictures or you can actually use the thumb wheel as well. To zoom in, you can actually zoom in and move using the joystick or you can actually move the picture around like that and you can pinch to zoom as well. You can also then double tap to go into a 100% and sorry, go back out again and swipe through the different images. And of course, you can use this button here again to select favorite pictures, which will give you a little star there to know that you've actually selected that picture as a favorite, so it's a lot easier to go back to when you're referring to your images later. Now, there is another button on the front of the camera, which is really cool. And if you see here, it's run under, under the Leica logo and you can customize that button as well. So by customizing that, I've got this set to key lock. So when I press this button in, it brings up the key lock option. And by selecting key lock, I can either select it by pressing the joystick button on, I can actually go left and right to toggle it on and off, 
or I can actually click on it on the rear thumb wheel, the rear uh, click wheel here. So it really depends on, you know, there's quite a few different ways to actually navigate through these menus, but it's really, really simple. But by having this key lock on, I can now lock the exposure in manual mode. And the great thing about locking in manual mode is that if you're in a studio or a controlled lighting environment where the light is not changing, it's a really good option because quite often you can be shooting, you can accidentally bump a shadow or aperture dial. And if you're not constantly checking your images, you might find that your exposures are varying uh, when they shouldn't be varying. And again, if I want to turn it off, I hold the front button down again, and I just click, and now I can actually use the dials again for aperture and shutter speed. So of course, the dials at the top, as you can see, there's your shutter dial right here. I've got it selected to go left for lower speeds, right for higher, and the same with the aperture for the rear dial itself. Really, really simple to use. And you'll also find that there's a record button for your video and the video still switch. So basically, if I want to shoot video and I want to turn the back screen on, I'm now in video mode just by pressing this button. And now I'm in still. You can go back and forth between the two and I can toggle what information I want on the screen as well just by hitting the information button. So again, I'm in video and still but I like to have a bit of information there. So when you've got the information here, you actually can see your audio levels right there as well as your time that you're actually filming too. Turning the camera over, we have, of course, your tripod mount. We have your connector for, which is gonna be for the multifunction hand grip that's coming soon. And we have the actual switch to take the battery out, okay? So we have click in and remove it. It's a really good system because what the one thing you don't wanna do is have that just pop out and fly and hit you in the face. So the great thing about it is it just pops out like that, you click it in, and the safety release allows you then to remove the battery. It's really, really simple, and the batteries are, are relatively small, and easy to carry around.